Hey guys, welcome to part two of our ZVZ series on Sue. We're gonna be taking a look at what is his admitted favorite build. It's actually a 12 pool with gas all in. But before I tell you guys exactly how to do it, I wanna show you a little bit of the idea behind it, what it looks like. It's essentially a initiation of Ling Baneling Wars that has perpetuated ZVZ since its inception. Basically, Lings, Banelings use Lings to take out uh, Banelings individually because uh, one Ling is nowhere near as expensive as one Baneling, so that's a good trade for the person with just a Ling. However, when you start losing 10 to 15 Lings or you know maybe even 6 Lings, that's starting to get insanely huge numbers. And that's the type of gameplay Sue really specializes in. That's why our first series covered Sue's impeccable control. So, since Sue likes that kind of... Uh, style and he's even admitted on stream that this is his favorite build I'm gonna show you his favorite build and then I'm gonna show you him executing it to perfection we'll show you exactly when to build things what to build and what kind of mentality to go through whether you're gonna to commit to the all-in or if you want to transition to a macro game but without any further ado Sue and Tastosis are gonna take over for a little while in this case no matter what you you can't have as many Lings out. Very true. And uh, he's actually going for Baneling now, Sue. This is a really big all in from Sue. Like, you just a speedling Bane has to kill him here, basically, or do a lot of damage. So, I will show you my favorite build. I use this build in Pro League many times against Ragnarok and Lino. I always win. It's actually subtle, but uh, it's not always an easy call to know if you need to go for the hatchery or go into the main and try to yeah. kill drones. So uh, taking out the hatchery is, is definitely going to be good for PL, but it's also saying that he doesn't want to overextend here because if he tries to go into the main and deal, deal some damage there and it doesn't work, then Sue is in a pretty hefty lead. Mm, now look at this. He runs in the main base. Banelings are morphing, so when those pop out, he has to run. Yep, there he goes, but he gets a queen, so the drones have to be pulled. And he killed that hatchery, let's not forget, which the hatchery is not restarted, his hatchery is going to be finishing pretty soon. So yeah. even though he's a little bit down in drones, he's going to be able to catch up easily. Ling speed is about to finish here for Sue. That means any mistake that Biel makes, Sue can really punish hard. Yeah, not just that too. Baneling Nest is done. He's starting to morph two Banelings, but Biel is pushing out. He knows that Baneling Nest is a possibility and he found where they're morphing. This is a huge moment from Biel. Ling Baneling Wars can be crazy aggressive. And the decision making even harder. Do you go for the hatchery or do you run for that drone line? Can you kill your opponent now or should you transition into the macro game? When in doubt, play it safe. Take small advantages. It's really hard to know the answer. Can you afford to look away and go inject your hatchery? Or will you lose everything to a rogue banelink? How the hell do you transition to roaches? And don't even get me started about supply blocks. Oh but my yo. god, he's supply blocked. Oh, Don't try this at home, kids. That's not what you want when you're going all in. This type of ZVZ is extremely volatile. But let's say that this is what you want. Ling, Baneling, Wars. Let's say you've got all the decision making and the control. That's going to be its own separate video. But let's say this is exactly what you want. How do you get here? How do you get to this type of aggression? And once you get here, maybe you don't kill your opponent. How do you proceed into a mid game? So this is a 12 pull, followed by a 14 overlord, followed by a 14 gas. We're going to quickly produce six lings, that's three pair, a queen, three more pair. So we're a total of 12 lings so far, metabolic boost uh, with one last pair of lings coming in. We're going to get the overlord at 22 out of 22, and then the baneling nest is built as soon as we reach. 50 gas. We're going to use one drone from gas, leaving us at two out of three drones on gas. The next drone we're going to build to replace that actually is going to go to minerals. At this point, Sue is beginning to realize his opponent's only on one base. So at this point, he wants to figure out what his opponent's actually trying to do. He is going to see a Roach Warren here in just a moment and cancel his Baneling Nest. Building a Roach Warren in response is actually a good response as he's going to get a little extra gas, have a few advantages over his opponent who has completely skipped the Baneling Nest, and will have a little bit more gas, however, a little bit of a weaker economy. Now, Sue is completely aware that he is ahead on economy. So he's just going to pull back 
and take an expansion, build some roaches while he's on one base max saturation, at least as far as one gas is concerned, and he's not going to bother taking a second gas until he ends up getting a layer, an evolution chamber, and he's going to stay on two gas roach production while droning his natural. Two gases of roaches leaves enough mineral income to continually be able to saturate. He's only going to make about six roaches and then get all the way up to two base saturation, which is amazing. He goes completely from all in aggression to all out economic, and then he's gonna go right back into all out production. It's really phenomenal how he does this, but because his expansion was a little bit quicker than his opponent, he was able to take this to a macro game knowing he's already done the damage. Now he is going to play the defender. He can see everything coming out of the natural of his opponent. He can also see when his opponent takes a third. He can see if the opponent moves out in either direction. So the moment he is in danger, he has enough units that he can add to those units, one production wave, maybe two, Two, and be in an okay position defensively. His opponent, he is assuming, has to be droning as well. So they're on a similar economy, but Sue was able to get his a little bit faster. Again, this means Sue is going to be the defender. We see Sue is already preparing for the layer tech. He's got that second gas we talked about. He is doing everything perfect, and his opponent even has an overlord over there to see it. With Ling's hiding at this third, he is going to be able to deny the third quite a bit, as well as pressure a counterattack if his opponent ever moves out without first dealing with the links. His opponent will be forced into this situation, and by now taking a third base, he is putting added offensive pressure onto his opponent to attack him because he is the economic one. He is the greedy one, which makes him by default the defender. And no matter how you reached this position, whether it was through an unorthodox low economy game or by all inning a fast hatchery player and just killing off his hatchery and going home, no matter how you achieved this position, you will be setting yourself up as the defender because you are a base ahead. No matter how you achieve this position, the theory is the same. You go from offense into defense, and it's your opponent's job to attack you marking the mid game. By scouting right now, he is utilizing these lings that were doomed anyway, but he's also able to check if there's a spire or some kind of lurkers or anything out of the ordinary. He's gonna know about it. He is also going to scout all these roaches moving right on out towards his third base. Again, he knows he's the defender, and all he's got to do is defend this third base that he is building. He's going ahead getting a third gas here as well to sustain his economy after this push. Now, we can see almost all ZBZ come down to the third base. The fifth and sixth gas is really what it's all about. And... That's where this attack is going. We already know that Sue has already seen it. Now this attack is kind of poking in and out here. This is just the roach war positioning that is inevitable to happen in any ZBZ. And Sue is so confident in both his own production, his own macro, his economy, all his decision making up to this point that you can see right here, he's just shuffling back and forth. All of his attention is literally going to this one engagement. He's gonna occasionally break off to a little bit of production, but it's all about this engagement. He knows this attack has to come. It's his opponent's only option, and here it is. He is going to plow right through this, take a look at the techniques he's using here, but really it's all going to come down to all the decision making he has made up until this point. Take a look at the back and forth shuffle. We have an entire video on this. I'm gonna put a link to this in the doodly doo below. Take a look if you want to see a little bit more about the technique he is using. Guys, if you like this type of content, please subscribe to this channel. Hit like on this video and share it with your friends. The best way to support this channel is through sharing this video as well as supporting us on Patreon. There will be a link popping up here in just a moment. If it's not there already, please subscribe to us on Patreon. There's a lot of cool rewards just for you. I'm Shaft of Polygon Gaming, signing out. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next week. Bye bye Sweet